Um, a little over a year ago, when Johnny left and relapsed, he died. He accidentally did fentanyl, and this is his. This is an interview we did with him, like right after he came back. My name is Johnny Crump. I've been sober 22 days. I had lied to myself so much about my alcoholism that I had separated the reality of my life and what I had become from the from what I had wanted. You know. I wanted to be a father to my daughter. I wanted to pay child support. I wanted to be a good man who does good things for a good cause and a good reason. I wanted all these things, but I couldn't stop drinking because deep down inside me in places I don't talk about, I was, <clears throat> I was not really admitting to my innermost self that I was an alcoholic. I would say it, I would parrot it at meetings, you know, alcoholic, but I, I always thought that I could control my drinking, you know, even just, uh, this last time, you know, I had been in the house 10 months. I had a sponsor, I was working the steps. I had my daughter back in my life. I'm getting along with my kid's mom. I'm working a job. <clears throat> and then one day when I'm waiting tables, I'm delivering uh, two shots of Patron and a Corona with a burger to uh, these happy bubbly Pepperdine University students. And they're laughing and joking and drinking and eating. and. Um, it planted a seed in my head that like maybe, maybe it wasn't all that bad. Maybe like I could just have like a couple shots of Patron and a Corona after work. And um, I did. And then I didn't tell anybody about it. And then about a week later, um, I'm having cravings for crystal meth. And I did some crystal meth. So the drink took a drink, and then the drink took me. And I ended up, uh, you know, I, I lost everything in a matter of months. I had uh, got kicked out of Graceland, ended up at uh, Pomona Recovery Center, you know, programming with a bunch of gangbangers. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm not talking to my daughter anymore. I'm not working the steps. I'm not in recovery. Long story short is I took my will back. I quit taking my bipolar meds. And I got into a little trap house in Hollywood on Sunset and Martell. So long story short is I ended up leaving Graceland and uh, full flight from reality. I'm back in psychosis. I'm, st I'm strung out on meth. I thought I could just do like a bunk bed situation in the hood. So I paid 600 bucks and got on a bunk bed on Sunset and Martell. And uh, that led to me going crazy. I took my will back. I ended up in the hood. Um, I had lost everything. And uh, I was gonna go get a couple Coronas. I took a drink. And the last thing I remember is I was in MacArthur Park and uh, you know my usual guy wasn't there so I went with another guy. I was gonna buy a little bit of meth and shoot up some relief. That's what I thought. Um, <clears throat> it didn't work out that way. The dope had fentanyl in it. Um, meth with fentanyl. And I guess the difference between me being a faded picture on my daughter's refrigerator and my kid having to pick out a coffin for me is my guardian angel. I didn't want to die. I didn't plan on overdosing. People talk about powerlessness. I had, uh, I had intellectually said I'm powerless a thousand times. You know, I've heard Pat and Danielle and my sponsor and numerous people in the program talk about powerlessness without power. But I had never experienced um, absolute powerlessness. Even when I was in a tent on Skid Row, I thought, you know, I can still manage. You know, I still get my social security check. I can still wipe my ass with a sock. I can get some dope to some like soup kitchens. But I came to at Cedar sinai Hospital on uh, January 29th. There was a fireman there, there was a police officer. There's these two nurses and a doctor with smelling salts. I got um, electrodes all over me from where they, had, where they had shocked me back to life. They had used Narcan on me. And um, I'll never forget the doctor saying, 
Sir, do you know where you are? And I didn't. There's all these beeping noises and all this, this like the hospital lights. And uh, the last thing I remember, I was, on, I was on Vista, Sunset and Vista by this fancy apartment building. I didn't want to wait till I got back to my sober living to shoot up on my bunk bed. So I shot up on, uh, on the steps of this apartment building. The lady with her groceries coming back from Ralph's stepped over me. And just because it was inconvenient for her to step over me, she called 911. And because of that, because of that experience, I knew that Graceland was the only place for me. I don't want to be a faded picture on my kid's refrigerator. I don't want to play around with this disease. I thought it was just like a moral turpitude, like it was just my bad behavior. But the truth is it's a disease and it's centered in my mind and it's out to kill me and every other addict out there. And I know the world hasn't been waiting around for me to be ready, but I'm, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to be a dad. I'm ready to do whatever the hell it takes. If I don't get butt naked honest with who I am and know my weaknesses, I'm never gonna change. I don't wanna live in a tent. I don't wanna be schizophrenic and strung out on crystal meth again. I came back to Graceland because I'm fighting for my life and I don't wanna fucking die.